My name is Monica, and I'm with the digital team at Dataversity. I'm stepping in for Shannon Kemp, our Chief Digital Manager today. We would like to thank you for joining this month's webinar, Do You Know Where Your Databases Are? It's part of our monthly webinar series sponsored by IDERA. Just a, point, just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or, if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share your highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing the links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce you to our day's, today's speaker, Scott Stone. Scott Stone manages IDERA's performance management products and has over 20 years of experience in product management and product marketing in the software and technology industry from small startups to Fortune 500 companies. For the past 15 years, Scott has focused on development of database performance and security products at various companies. Earlier in his career, Scott was a software engineer in the space and defense industry. Scott holds an MBA from Rice University as well as a bachelor and master's degree in electrical engineering from George, Georgia's Institute of Technology. And with that, I will give the floor to Scott to give today's webinar. Hello and welcome. Thank you, Monica. Um, I, I was going to say I have uh, more experience for more decades than I care to admit, uh, uh, but uh, since Monica gave the full my full bio, I have uh, I have to just tell you that a lot of these uh, these tales we talked that the the definition of this webinar is cautionary tales and solutions. All of the cautionary tales I'm going to be talking about today are not made up scenarios. They are real scenarios that I have firsthand experience with. Um, I will just say that there I either have firsthand experience either as as I was involved directly or I was involved with a vendor that was brought in for the to solve the problem or I heard this this tale from a from a customer who was frustrated. Um, so with that, uh, I want to talk about the hard questions to answer. Um, a lot of these questions are might seem to be not the most important thing if you're as if you're involved as I am in performance monitoring you're primarily concerned about performance but you're if you're a DBA or a DBA manager you're also going to be expected to answer these questions at any time uh, where are your databases who has all the databases are we compliant with licenses um, are we current on backups uh, what are the reporting services? Um, how many SQL servers are are we using today, and what's the ongoing cost of those? Could we save money on those SQL servers? The there's three areas that those general questions fall under. The first is discovery or inventory management. Um, do you know all of the all the databases your environment? Uh, do you know who to contact if there's a problem with a given application, if you have to reboot a given SQL server for some reason? Uh, do you know who's going to be affected if one goes down? Um, licensing is more direct. You always need to know that you're compliant with licensing. Uh, licensing enforcement varies, but uh, in all cases, all vendors, including Microsoft, expect you to be to be uh, Make sure that you are compliant and it's on you if you violate that license, whether the software allowed you to do it or not. And finally, environment state, uh, what, which databases are up, which instances are up, uh, which are the ones that are problems, uh, what, how do I find out if there is a server out there that I don't know about and what state it's in? So this is where the, the, the the cautionary tales, the ghost stories start. Um, it's really, it's not associated with Halloween at all, but uh, it's just sort of appropriate that it's uh, coming up right now. And the common theme through all of them is it's not your fault, but it is your problem. In most of these cases, I withhold the names uh, to protect the innocent and, and sometimes the guilty. But in most of these cases, 
um, at least the people involved did not, it was not their fault or they did not see it as their responsibility, yet they still were, got in trouble. So, um, so you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through some of these, these cautionary tales. The first one is unmanaged sprawl. Um, this was a large distributed company with an enterprise database group. It's well managed. Um, they had everything, they thought they had everything in order. I'll, I'll explain that a little later. Uh, but they thought they had everything well under control. Um, there were DBAs assigned for, for all uh, technologies and they were, uh, had their assigned databases and applications and they knew what was going on with all of those. Um, they had a changeover and a CIO, a new CIO came on and, and in touring the various business units, he stumbled on what's commonly called shadow IT. Um, a particular business unit had, had bought its own application, spun it up on its own, and, uh, and it was running, in this case, it was SQL Server. Uh, and they were able to do that because SQL Server is rel relatively easy to get up and running. Um, so they were able to, to get things up and running and they had these, this application that they were dependent upon. Uh, the CIO saw that that was a problem and uh, he decided to uh, resolve the problem to bring all applications everywhere under the corporation, under central management, all under him. So he knew where everything was and what the state of everything was. Uh, so he ordered an audit of an inventory of all applications and databases in use. Uh, this started with a, a uh, just a, an appeal to the various business unit managers to, to voluntarily report um, what applications they were using so they could compare those with the applications that the, uh, the, the IT department know, knew about. Um, and about 50 applications were voluntarily reported by the business units. That's, that's a rough estimate. This is sort of uh, based on my memory. It's, it was on that order of 50 between 45 and 75. Um, the DBA group used a discovery tool uh, to detect all databases running. Um, they, uh, they didn't find any unreported databases for Oracle. They primarily had Oracle and SQL Server. So that's not too surprising because Oracle is typically a little more high touch, a little, it requires a little more expertise for anybody. Uh, it's not for, for the uh, uh, idle practitioner. Um, so they didn't find much of Oracle out there, none at all actually. But for SQL Server, there were over 300 reported databases that were detected. And by databases, I'm meaning instances in this type. In this case, they were unpatched, unmonitored, unmanaged. They were completely, uh, uh, they were in a state that no one knew and no one had, and of course the people who had implemented it had nev never knew how to or whether they should be maintaining the SQL servers. They just installed it and they ran it and as long as it didn't break, they didn't worry about it. Well, the CIO, in this case, I will say it, I was we were I was part of a company that was brought in uh, to sort of help resolve this problem. The uh, the CI, CIO basically told the, the database group that uh, you need to manage these from now on, and uh, and we need to have a a rule that in the future this does not happen, and need we have a way to monitor to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. Cautionary tale number two: SQL Slammer. Um, I don't know how many of you remember the SQL Slammer virus when it came out. It was a, one of the uh, most well-known database viruses that came out. Um, there was a large software development company that had to distribute the developments. It had over 13 different development labs where different products were developed in different locations all around the world. Um, one day, everyone started noticing that the system response time was slowing. Uh, then it ground to a halt. Everybody was wondering what was going on. The uh, internal and external websites were affected. So that means production and sales were halted. There, nobody was able to to download demos. No one was able to 
put in a say, put in a purchase request. Um, the uh, the CEO who was uh, was not very uh, uh, guarded in his communications blasted an angry message to all the employees demanding answers. Um, and yes, it was all. It was I, I suppose he didn't know where the responsibility lay, but he knew that he was upset and he wanted somebody to give him an answer. Um, the CIO of the company, which is probably who you should have talked to, um, answered, copying all as well, probably to let everybody know that that ownership had been taken. Um, took ownership to investigate with the uh, with the IT department. Um, hours later, the CIO reported the SQL Slammer virus was the culprit, and they were working to isolate the problem and get everything back online. And they did that pretty quickly. They got it isolated, uh, and we were back up and running very well. But um, the CEO wanted to know how the virus went undetected by IT. Um, and a few days later, the CIO that was in question here uh, triumphantly reported that the virus did not come from any databases that, that, that IT managed. Uh, they had been dutifully maintaining all of their production databases and making sure everything was patched and making sure that everything was backed up and, and well, uh, well cared for. It had originated in development deployments, but it had spread outside of the development deployments. So um, the end of the last communication that we were all able to see, the CIO, CEO was, was unimpressed and he declared IT responsible to keep unmanaged environments isolated or to manage them. Uh, so it was pretty much a, it is not your fault, but it is your problem coming from the CEO. The CEO decided that from now on, it is your problem to make sure that development and IT both all stay compliant and are all, and that we're not vulnerable to any uh, viruses from unpatched machines or unpatched databases. Finally, license compliance. Um, there's again another software development company that has an MSDN distribution. Uh, the development version of, of SQL Server permitted unlimited usage for development purposes. There's, uh, there's not a lot of restriction because for development purposes, you do need to uh, at least be able to simulate uh, production systems. The R&D individual teams uh, failed to religiously re enforce this license definition. And by that, I'll explain that in the next bullet here. Um, Microsoft found out that they had failed to rigidly enforce this license definition when someone from R&D opened a support ticket on a licensed instance. But it so happened that this particular uh, license instance was being used for a small production application that someone had purchased and was using, again, within the R&D organization. And they had rationalized that they were okay with that, but Microsoft disagreed. That was not the purpose of the development version. Um, and in this case, Microsoft is the one that said, it is your fault, it is your problem. You need to rectify the situation and purchase the licenses that you need for the applications that you're using. So in these stories, we've talked about uh, a lot of vulnerabilities that are obvious. Uh, data growth and groups are spinning up their own applications and servers. And on many places, you're involved with acquisitions and mergers with companies, and it's hard to know what's in the new organization and how well it's controlled. Um, sometimes it's it's a matter of merging the IT department. Sometimes it's a matter of you may inherit something that you have no idea uh, exactly what, you, what it is you're getting, and you just have to figure it out as you go. Um, Microsoft SQL Server license changes uh, have been happening over the past so 15 to 20 years. Um, it creates a lot of confusion for the users um, and who are operating under one license model and then when they 
go to purchase again. Another license model is in place and they have to figure out where they stand and do they upgrade. Um, so additional unknown servers could result in, in, a, in a lot of additional licensing cost if there's an audit from, from, the, uh, from Microsoft. Lack of DBA insights uh, into servers in terms of like what, which, how well are they running, which ones are down, which ones are even being used could result in servers running without patches uh, leading to production interruptions. Again, this goes back to the SQL slammer tale. Um, just because the the servers that you're directly that you're directly managing in production are well maintained doesn't mean that you're not vulnerable to other databases in your environment that are not well maintained. And you can't manage it if you're not aware of it. If you don't know what's out there and if you don't know how people are using their systems, then there's not a lot you can do about it. So best practices in database inventory is one, have some sort of discovery tool that can locate databases or instances that you may not be aware of uh, so that you don't get surprised. You wanna be able to find, uh, find, at least periodically, go out and look and see what is being used and not be dependent totally on, on self-reporting from the business units. You need to stay on top of which servers are up, which servers are down, which need a patch or a backup, which ones are short on space. This is where we sort of overlap somewhat in the, the realm of performance management, but before you worry about performance management, you also have to worry about availability management. Is it, are the, is a given instance or server working well? Is it going to continue working well for the near future? You need to track server growth for future capacity needs uh, and reallocate server resources for other applications or user groups. If some application comes online, uh, you need to find out whether you can just assign that to an existing instance or do you need to uh, extend your license? Do you need to get new machines? Do you need to, if you're on a, in a cloud environment, do you need to get a new environment for that as well? So there, you have to keep uh, awareness of whether you have enough uh, availability within your existing systems to take on new needs and also be able to anticipate what the growth pattern is so that you can be uh, get ahead of the game for future uh, capacity cap in servers and storage. Uh, you want to be able to generate reports to demonstrate that SQL Server environment is up to date and current on licensing to make sure that you don't have excessive costs. And again, this goes back to the licensing. The, that's a, uh, an example. I actually have run into that multiple times, uh, again, with the development uh, licenses being used improperly. But uh, there, in other cases, you can just be out of compliance specifically with the latest uh, or with the, the license model that, 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 uh, that Microsoft is currently using, and you may be caught unaware because a prior version, you were completely covered. So what are the, co the obstacles to overcome to achieve these best practices? Uh, again, these are things that uh, we've encountered. Uh, customers have, have told us about these things, and sometimes you can overcome them. Sometimes it's, you just have to work around them. Uh, one of the most common is the security offer just doesn't like scanning for discovery. Um, in these cases, uh, what we like to tell people that it's, there's nothing that's inherently insecure about scanning as long as you know what the scan is for and you control that scan and you know that um, you know why it's why it's being being run. Security officers don't like it. Security departments don't like it because it's going to uh, trigger security intrusion detection systems or it's gonna violate a current policy that's just uh, prohibits that sort of activity. But in most cases, you're able to uh, uh, explain that you can schedule can't scans periodically so that you're not uh, setting off too many alarms that, that during particular maintenance periods, you can do discovery processes and 
uh, so that you can keep aware and make sure that, because that also makes you insecure if you have something running out there that you don't know about and you're not managing as well. That's more insecure than just running an occasional scan to make sure that you know what's running and what's not running. Um, another obstacle that uh, we've encountered is business unit uh, shadow IT. Um, for those that are not familiar with that term, um, it usually comes up because in a rapidly growing organization or in an organization where uh, there's been a lot of uh, their remote offices, um, sometimes a given business unit will take on, it will support themselves or attempt to support themselves uh, with information technology by getting their own applications and their own computers and their own databases. And they do this because they think it's more efficient, but in the long run, it almost always tends to be less efficient, mainly because they don't know what they're taking on. They, they don't know the, the long-term requirements to manage these systems. Uh, so they've solved their short-term problem of not having to go through the process, but they create a worse long-term problem. So in these cases, uh, we ask, that uh, if you're in this situation, you ask the business units to help support funding for additional support for those applications uh, so that the, the proper group can manage the databases, manage the systems, um, and be staffed appropriately so that they're not, don't have the worry that they always have, which is that they won't get support when they need it. Uh, Another obstacle is corporate IT doesn't have the funding for inventory control. Um, inventory control is something that is sometimes hard to wrap their, for executives to wrap their head around. Um, their, main, their performance makes sense. They wanna make sure that systems are up. They wanna make sure that we're not wasting time. We wanna make sure that people can can make purchases, they wanna make sure that people aren't wasting time. Inventory is a little more obscure. Why can't you just keep that in a notebook or something or a spreadsheet? Often, uh, a lot of people that I've dealt with, that's exactly what they're doing. They're, they're doing it in a very inefficient way, uh, but they've realized that this is exactly what they have to do. They have to somehow keep track of who's using what and who's associated, which, which, which application, who's going to be affected, uh, so that you know what's more important than uh, other applications, which databases are more important, and which ones do they have to pay special attention to and, and, and monitor extremely closely. So this is a little tougher because it really involves just getting the, uh, the, the the organization to understand that the risk that, in, in, that is involved of having something go south uh, is much worse than the amount that you might have to invest. And you're having to, you're going to have to do this one way or the other. Um, you're going to have to either keep keep tab uh, keep tabs of it either with another application with a database of its own. Uh, which means you have to maintain that on its own as well. Um, but in all cases, we know that inventory management saves money in more efficient resource usage. So with that, I'm going to transition to talk about the particular product that we have called SQL Inventory Manager that happens to, have, at least it has evolved to solve these problems. Uh, to give you a little history of SQL Inventory Manager, it was originally intended primarily as a lightweight performance monitor uh, for organizations that did not want to invest in a, the price of a, uh, a performance monitor that uh, covered everything and did complete diagnosis. They're, they have instances that they weren't that considered, uh, worried about. But what we found uh, among actual customers was they were mainly using it and mainly seeing a value in it as an inventory application. The main value they saw was its ability to discover things automatically and to automatically deploy uh, 
monitors for given instances. So it was rebranded as SQL Inventory Manager. It used to be SQL Elements. And, uh, and most of the new development in that organization or it, in this product has been along those lines. Um, it still has, as you see in the screenshot, uh, health recommendations, health check recommendations. There are about 20 of those, uh, just common things. They're not deep dive things, but they just give you an awareness of the most important things that you want to maintain awareness of on all of your databases and all your instances and all your applications. The, this particular product functionality map, um, some of you may not be uh, familiar with IDERA and IDERA products, but this is a, a sort of a map that helps to resolve, if you are familiar, what products do what in what area. SQL Inventory Manager covers the areas of discovery, inventory, health checks, and alerting, light alerting. Um, SQL Diagnostic Manager is our more of a deep dive performance monitoring product that picks up there and also does light and deep monitoring and also offers enterprise functionality and has uh, deeper functionality in terms of health checks and alerting. It has many more uh, alerts and analysis um, and it has more detailed, uh, more configurable alerting capability. Admin tool set and, uh, and DFRAG and SQL check are other products that cover these areas, discovery and inventory, but they are a little deeper, but they're not as broad. They don't provide SQL admin tool set, doesn't do health checks or alerting. It doesn't do anything automatically, but it's just a, another tool that extends your capability to, uh, to do ad hoc uh, analysis. And uh, SQL check is our free uh, light monitoring tool for real-time monitoring. Inventory Manager uh, helps you to discover and track your SQL Server inventory. You can know what you have and who owns it. Auto discover any new servers that are installed. Uh, again, to avoid that cautionary tale of, of a rogue server being spun up by someone in an organization that you don't know about. Uh, it invites, it helps you to organize things better by tagging various instances and databases so that you can group them logically and assign those databases to your internal staff to maintain and report on more effectively. Um, it helps, you can quickly deploy and access uh, from anywhere with a web-based and agentless user interface. So there's no application that uh, needs to be installed for the various DBAs who are going to be using it. And even from uh, the business unit uh, uh, stakeholders who are interested, they, you can also provide access to them. They can just get access through a browser if you would like. And also you can get alerts when a server goes down, space is running low. Some of the basic health checks that I talked about earlier. Uh, this is the uh, architecture of uh, SQL Inventory Manager. Um, to go through this real quickly, um, as we talked about, it has a web browser that connects to a web application service. We have two repositories, a core repository and a SQL Inventory Manager repository that are uh, where the data for connection information and for the basic performance information that's being displayed is, is kept for uh, a short period of time. Uh, there is a collection service for SQL Inventory Manager that goes through the periodic health checks, discovery, uh, processing, alerting. Uh, it looks at computer availability, configuration, SQL Server configuration, or if, if any configuration changes been made. Um, SQL Server Availability, uh, which is independent of the computer availability as well. And finally, SQL Server Discovery. Uh, SQL Server Discovery uses the, uh, the browser service. We also use uh, WMI uh, TCP scans for across an IP range. Um, we scan the Windows Registry uh, and Service Control Manager and also uh, the uh, SQL Server service. 
all of these can be enabled or disabled uh, at will. They can also be, as I said, some people uh, have some uh, a little bit of reluctance to have all those services being used, scanning all the time. You can choose to use all of them all the time, or you can choose certain ones to turn on, and you can also turn them on or off periodically just to get a, a quick snapshot of what you're dealing with. Um, on the Discovery SQL Server instances, there's nothing installed. There are no agents. There are no agents. There are no stored procedures. Uh, we monitor both physical and virtual databases in all cases. So, the the areas of discovery, licensing, and health. Uh, we talked about some of the capabilities that uh, that the, the inventory manager has, and these are Again, these are all things that you're going to need to do whether you have this product or not. But uh, the product is has been defined and built around the requirements of of users. So a lot of these these uh, needs are being met directly, and because they've been built over the years by by organizations that have, have requested them. Uh, discovering SQL instances. Uh, uh, Business intelligence services uh, is something that uh, was added uh, several releases ago. Uh, helps to manage SQL Service Brawl, as we talked about. And this is a problem no matter what kind of database you have, but we found that it's a bigger problem with SQL Server, at least, than any of the other enterprise databases like Oracle or Sybase or, or, uh, or actually SAP, ASC now. Sorry, I'm giving away a little bit there. Um, Flexible discovery options, as I talked about, some of the options that you have. Uh, organization uh, tagging, grouping, and organizing instances so that they make sense. Uh, license reporting, awareness of the health, the health status. There's about 20 to 25 different uh, uh, health checks that are that are run periodically. Patch analysis and reporting. We keep track of. Uh, help you keep track of what is the latest patch that is available and which of which instances have been patched or have not been patched. And again, the, uh, the web interface. SQL Inventory Manager reports. These are a few of the reports that are available. Uh, there's, of course, there's an inventory report, health check report. All this information is available directly in the interface, but uh, for interacting with other organizations or for passing, uh, giving a, a periodic check to management, uh, some of these reports can be used for that. Uh, chargeback report and uh, SQL Server licensing report to help you understand if you are in compliance. All of these, um, all of these reports uh, use SSRS. Uh, and the, uh, we have a idea of report utility to help deploy the reports, but, it, but they are deployed on, on SSRS. User access views. Um, inventory manager is not specifically a security tool, but it does. This is kind of where it intersects with the security world. Um, profile information for roles and users. Uh, can be discovered and displayed, so you keep track of who has access where. Um, you can easily see the users of, of, of new discovered databases, who exactly has this and why are they using it, so you can, can contact them and figure out what's going on. You can reach out to uh, users to figure out whether they need access continue to or need continued access or whether they're just, this is just a, a user that was defined and left alone. You can get more information about all the database principles, objects, roles, objects, objects, roles, and users, and who uh, who has what permissions. Host server view um, gives information about all of the hosts, uh, number the number of sockets, number of logical uh, uh, number of cores that are assigned, the disk capacity on those machines. Uh, what free space is available, what versions they're running, and what versions of SQL Server they're running, and whether they're virtualized or not. Of course, most things are virtual, virtualized these days. 
Uh, it helps to give you a topology of, of all the servers, virtual machines, and instances. And the host server uh, information is available for, for SQL Server licensing. Licensing updates. Um, we talked about licensing and, the, and needing to uh, keep track of what uh, what is configured on what is, is based on the varying uh, changing license model from, from SQL Server. Um, in 2016, uh, Microsoft SQL Server or Microsoft changed the, the model for that. Um, in the licensing view, uh, we've updated this and there's a table that defines exactly what is uh, how these are signed by SQL Server version, but um, we're not. We don't try to give you a a specific are you compliant or are you not recommendation, but we give you all the information in a central place that uh, allows you to decide where what you're using where and whether that complies with the license that you currently have. Uh, coming in our next version, which was SQL, uh, SQL Inventory Manager version 2.6, um, we're going to be adding expanded cloud support. That should be available in the next, say, four weeks or so. Um, we're adding discovery of cloud instances and databases uh, for, on both Amazon and Azure. Uh, that includes databases as service support for uh, Azure DB and Azure RDS. And we also have health checks available for um, infrastructure as a service uh, for SQL Server instances that are actually running on Azure virtual machines or on Amazon EC2. I wanted to, to kind of give you an overview of the, all the products that we have, just in case if you have interest in any of these areas, uh, IDERA covers performance monitoring, security, and compliance, backup and administration for uh, SQL servers. You can see the, the products here, they're categorized. Of course, Diagnostic Manager is for performance and monitoring. That's the most popular product. Inventory Manager is also a monitor, but it's also a discovery tool primarily. Um, security and compliance, compliance manager and secure are most often sold together. Compliance secure is for specifically, are you secure? Have you, uh, what, what, what health checks are available that can tell you whether uh, you're using best practices to make sure that everything is locked down properly. Compliance manager is more about, is not about security as much as it is about uh, compliance with typical uh, guidelines such as HIPAA or SOX. Uh, we have uh, templates for each one of these uh, guidelines and that you can select and it will help you to determine whether your, your databases and instances are in compliance with that. And backup, we of course, the main product there is SQL Safe Backup. We also have a job manager, uh, admin tool set, and comparison tool set. So I wanted to sum up by uh, just kind of reviewing some of the areas that are important to you for you to, to, uh, to maintain. These are areas that SQL Inventory Manager in particular has been designed to meet. Um, you need to know, I think I've demonstrated that there's reasons why you need to know what databases are deployed in your organization, both the ones that you're responsible for overtly and the ones that are out there that you haven't discovered yet. Um, and you need to have the details for to manage these effectively. Auto discovery is one of the uh, main features uh, inventory management, getting the relevant information about the about the deployed uh, databases, licensing. Of course, this is a common. This is one of the most uh, popular features. People really have a tough time keeping their arms around whether they're currently compliant with licensing. Uh, environment state. Uh, this is both for 
basic performance and availability checks, but also to check which uh, SQL servers are actually being used and which ones may be able to be decommissioned. Uh, organization for tagging, uh, grouping organizations, and then alerting, um, being able to, to get proactive notification and alerts. And again, this is where the inventory manager has about 20 of these. Our uh, diagnostic manager product has 150, 200, uh, with even more recommendations uh, that are provided by the analysis services. So with that, I will um, review, whoops, sorry. I wanted to close out and see if there's any questions. I do have a question here. Mm -hmm. so can you speak to how a data governance and data management office would work with an IT group? Tracking, monitoring databases. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not hearing you very well. I heard data governance. I didn't hear the rest of that. I'm sorry. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Sorry. Can you speak to how a data governance or data management office would work with IT group in tracking and monitoring databases, specifically ownership and responsibility? That's. That's a good question. Um, I can't speak to that directly. That's not the area, an area that I uh, have direct responsibility for. Um, we do have uh, our uh, data governance products, our uh, ER Studio product, and, uh, and to a lesser degree, our compliance manager product uh, uh, address the data governance uh, questions. Um, I would just say that uh, you will, you need the to, whatever you use, you need the tool to be aware of uh, the, what you have and how to report on it, um, so that you can make sure that you are are in compliance with with whatever these are are required. So you do recommend that maybe an IT department work with a data management or governance? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you have to. Um, the, uh, I, I am assuming, <laughs> I am assuming that it, that 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 would happen because otherwise, if they're operating independently and totally without knowledge of what the other one is doing, um, you're not the you're not governing you're not governing anything um, uh, to have any effectiveness. Uh, you do need to keep uh, keep communications open. So we do have um, a question about how it compares to Redgate SQL monitoring. Redgate SQL monitoring. Um, or Redgate. Red Redgate. Yeah, I, I'm aware. Um, Redgate SQL monitor. Is that SQL? The question? Yes. Okay. Well, Inventory Manager is, uh, SQL Monitor compares more directly to Diagnostic Manager. So, um, uh, it is a performance monitor and it is not, uh, this is designed uh, primarily for inventory management. It's designed to uh, replace uh, the systems that data, uh, DBAs had previously, again, several of the customers that we had were previously keeping up with this in spreadsheets. Um, it's, it's to keep up with who is assigned to which applications, who are the affected parties. Um, it does have some light monitoring. Uh, I, it is not, it is neither intended to uh, be a performance monitor, nor does it achieve that, again, in that, uh, uh, map that I showed, you can see that it doesn't it kind of stop short. Uh, it focuses more on the basic uh, up-down status. Is it backed up? Um, there is some light performance monitoring just to say is is it, is something slower, is it fast? But it, uh, inventory manager is not intended as a diagnostic tool. Uh, so um, 
that would be a more of a comparison with a diagnostic manager. And in that case, I say I think Redgate is a pretty good tool. Diagnostic manager has been around for quite uh, quite a long time, and uh, it's a little more mature, has more depth of functionality. Um, but, uh, but Redgate SQL Monitor is, is good too. So uh, how many companies or what percent of the companies, large to medium, do you think um, have this diverse um, databases that are throughout the company? Are, are, you, are you asking uh, how many, what percentage of companies have our, our hidden databases? Or hidden these oh, I, gosh, I don't know. That's a, uh, I don't know if any, that's, that's a hard question to answer because if you put out a survey and you say, how many of you don't know where your databases are? Um, well, who's going to admit it? Um, I would imagine that a lot of the large enterprise companies, anything that is that is distributed, any company that has more than say two offices is likely to have these kind of, we call them rogue servers, uh, where somebody somewhere has bought a tool on their own and spun up their own database. Um, and is not reporting it back, probably because they see it's more efficient. They don't have to report through corporate IT. Uh, I would say anything that's any company that's over, say, five different locations, uh, more than I'm kind of spitballing here, but between uh, 150 employees or so. Uh, it's likely to be a problem if it's not maintained and not managed. I mean, in, in a lot of these large companies, they are doing this proactively. You either have to have a tool that does it or, or a person who is periodically uh, doing a survey and making sure there's nothing out there. Okay, some sort of policy in place to exactly and ask these questions. That's great to know. Uh, well, we uh, have a very quiet audience today. Uh, not many questions coming in. Um, do you think there's anything else that um, would recommend for? No, I, I would. I would say if you're interested in hearing more, um, I would. Uh, I would ask you please go to idira.com, um, and uh, you can get trials of SQL Inventory Manager, or. Uh, or any of the other products that I, that I free trials, two week trials, uh, of any of the products that I mentioned. Um, if you have questions, join our communities and submit your questions there. We'll, uh, those are at community.idera.com. Um, if you are interested specifically in an inventory manager, um, download a trial, try it out, and uh, one of our sales managers will contact you and uh, and get set up for a demo. Thanks, Scott. Um, that was a great presentation, and thank you for answering all the questions. Uh, seems like that's it for today. Uh, just to remind everyone, we'll be posting the recorded webinar and slides to dataversity.net within two business days, and Shannon will, Shannon will send out a follow-up email to let you know the links and other requested information. Thank you again, IDERA, for sponsoring today's webinar. As always, Thank you for attending today's webinar, and I hope everybody has a great day. You have a great day, Scott. Thank you.